Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duos Time here today, back with another Black Desert video. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Pit of Undying in Black Desert, and for those of you that don't know what it is, it's like a PvE boss rush type of mode where you can take a bunch of bosses on 1v1 every single day, and it's kind of pretty interesting, has some cool rewards, and is something you might wanna try out if you're into PvE type content in this game. This video has been one of the most requested videos on my live stream, so you're in luck. The rewards are pretty cool. I think I said that already, but yeah, anyway, uh, quickly before we get into the video, how to do this, how to get started, all those important things. If you're new to my channel, new to Black Desert, or you've been watching videos on the channel and still have not subscribed yet, please consider it. Helps you grow my channel, you stay up to date with new content, and we both win. And without further ado, let's get into it and start off with how to get started with the quest line for Pit of Undying. So to get started with this, press the O key on the keyboard to bring up the quest tab, click on the suggested tab, and scroll down the list, and uncheck hide completed that way, in case you've already done it, you'll know. Um, but scroll down the list until you get to the section where you are looking for the Great Expedition, and then you are looking for Crow's Nest. And there's two of them here, Ravina and then Nest Misty Island. You want to take this Nest Misty Island one. This quest line has a bunch of quests in it. You can see it's got 33, and I've already done 13 of them. At some point, I decided to start this quest line, but you're going to need to do this quest line if you want to go ahead and do the uh, the PvE region here. In order to do this quest line, you are going to need a boat, and if you don't have a boat, you can buy them off the central market, or you can head over here in Valia, um, Valia, one of the first cities in the game, and head over to the NPC right here, Proy, this NPC. And when you get to Proy, if you click on the shop tab, you will see that they have a Bartali sailboat that is available for purchase. So if you don't have a boat, um, you can buy one right here. So now, as you can see, I haven't completed this quest line yet, and I need to do that before we go any further in this video to show you how it works. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get involved with that. Also, while I'm doing this quest line, I wanna point out one thing. If you've never done ocean content before, the Pit of Undying is located at this island out here that's hidden in shrouds and mystery. To get there, you need to sail basically directly above the city of Kusha here, or right above uh, Susan's uh, garrison over here, right up from there, or directly over from Okia's eye. So if you're kind of looking for like a reference point on the map here, right, straight out from over here and straight over from Okia's eye is, is where you need to target with your boat. So um, if you've never been there before, that is the direction you need to head because your map will likely be all fogged up here. At some point in the quest line, you will have to go to this region to continue with it. And this quest line is accepted at the start from talking to your Black Spirit. If you hover over it, it says, via the Black Spirit suggested quest tab. Now, unfortunately, because I did already do the first few quests in this quest chain, I can't really show you how to do the full thing, but I can walk you through basically what you needed to do for each of these. The initial quest, again, is started by talking to your Black Spirit by picking up the suggested quest in the suggested tab. That is done on the comma key. Quest tab at the bottom, suggested. You will see the quest line listed here. The first few quests are going to involve talking to various NPCs on the mainland. It's nothing too crazy, just interacting with NPCs. Now the first difficult quest is when we get to Time Catching Ghost, which is where you need to sail out here to the Crow's Nest. Again, as I already mentioned, Crow's Nest is this tiny little island out here in the ocean. It's this one that's highlighted blue on my map directly across out here. Here you'll need to meet the NPC Annex, who is right at the wharf where you can dock your boat here, right at the entrance. Now after you're done talking with Annex, the next quest is going to take you further into the main area here, where you'll see the NPC Kiro. Now this NPC is going to ask you a couple of questions, and the answers to those questions are, the Papu have more barters, Merindora, and a Kroniak, Prince, who lost his memory. So that completes the Riddle of Kuro and Toro. You're then going to have the quest White Crow, which will take you to Ravinia. Ravinia is located up here to the left, all the way back, Ravinia, right here. You're going to hand her an item that you got from one of the earlier quests walking around in the mainland talking to NPCs. Pretty straightforward. This will open up the door behind her, the Crow's Guest quest line, which will take you into Lavala, which is right here. Lavala is going to ask you to take a picture of your character, which you can do by pressing the F4 key on the keyboard to bring up the beauty tab. You can then click on the Take Portrait button up in the top left corner over here. Hit Yes, and that will take a picture of the character. Go ahead and talk to your Black Spirit after that, and then you'll hand it over to the NPC Lavala. And that'll bring you off to where I am in the quest line. So now we need to go in and interact with some items throughout the area. And these are pretty straightforward. They're all of the items that are sitting under each of these little uh, kind of like archways here. So just go ahead and interact with all of them. But pretty straightforward. You just interact with it with the R key, mash on through the dialogue. And after you've interacted with all of those, that's going to bring up the quest right here that you can turn it, complete it, accept the next portion of the quest line, interact with this king's toy, go ahead and talk back to the NPC over here. Black Spirit's going to give you the next portion here under the Crow's Nest of Without Borders, so make sure you have that accepted in your Black Spirit under Quest Suggested. That's going to take you to an NPC in the next room over, where you'll interact with them right here. Keep mashing through and accepting the quest lines. That's going to take you back into the main room here, where you'll interact right here. Head on back over this way. Doors will open, and you'll see our good old friend Patricio. 
take the quests that Patricio offers under Crow's Nest, Crow's Exhibits. You also have the side quest you can do, but Crow's Nest, Crow's Exhibits is what we're looking for right now. You can also get some knowledge of Leopard of the Snowlands if you want. Now this next part, you need to do the same sort of thing we did a little bit ago. You've got a bunch of archways with things in them. Just interact with the different archways. Just go around the room interacting with them. And after you've done that, the quest will complete. Go ahead and talk to Patricio again. Black Spirit will pop up after that. You don't need to mash through it after. Wait for the Black Spirit to pop up. That'll give you the next quest in the line, Crow's Nest Everguard's Where. That's going to have you clicking on Portugio again to complete that portion of the quest. Click on Quest Option again. Greatest Glory is the next quest you're going to take. Mash through the dialogue. Black Spirit's going to pop up again. Accept the next quest, Led by Instinct. And we're going to have to head back to Lavala Keeper of si I mean, Lavala Keeper of the Hall. Interact with them. Crow's Nest Pit of the Undying. Click on the Chat option. And then we're going to take the quest, Teleport to the Pit of Undying. And at this point, you're going to want to make sure you have your combat stuff ready, because we are going to be getting into some fight in action. So make sure to pick your artifact sets for whatever you might have for combat, throw on your combat gear, and then click on chat again to the Pit of Undying. Here you'll see the NPC Chorpy. Go ahead and interact with Chorpy. You'll see the quest tab here for quest, Crow's Nest, do your best, accept that quest line. And with that, we are going to have to begin our fights. So the first boss here has nothing too crazy mechanically. It's just a uh, boss that you've got to go ahead and beat, so... Uh, I believe you got 10 minutes to kill these different bosses, so do keep that in mind as well. There's no mechanic with this one that you have to keep track of. It's kind of just a kind of just a fight that you're going to be doing against this guy here. So you stand on the yellow mark, and then the fight begins. So yeah, first boss, nothing too crazy with that one. Just an idea of my gear score that I'm rocking for this as well. Um, kind of like mid-game-ish, maybe mid-late game-ish type gear. Eh, let's not say late game, that's not really accurate. Probably mid game, I think is fair. Now this next boss, Valken, has a bit more of a mechanic to it. Basically, he's going to summon a bunch of mist. You want to avoid the mist at all costs because it damages you, explodes on you, all those types of things. Has a phase during the middle of it where he's going to jump to the middle and spawn a bunch of stuff to try and chase you down and kill you. It is pretty free back attack opportunity. So anyway, uh, we'll set up and begin this fight as well, and we'll, we'll see, if, uh, see if I'm accurate on this one. Well, I guess you don't have to worry about phases if you just kill the boss before anything happens, lol. Now the next boss, Farid, has a mechanic as well, so for this one you're going to need to apply a floating CC. If you don't know what that is, or you've never had to deal with those before, if you press the K key on the keyboard, you can click the skill filter button, and then you can scroll down until you see the option for floating, uh, right there. So these are all of your skills that apply floating to your opponent. I'm in the awakening spec, so I can use projection or fiery angel or Twister to apply um, any one of those different options there. So around a quarter of his health bar taken down is when you're going to want to do that. I'll go ahead and this time I'll try not to burst the boss down so you can see the mechanic. Uh, and I'll try, I'll try to remember it uh, to activate the mechanic on it. So fight should begin now that we've got this. We'll take him down to about a quarter of the HP bar. And then when he gets there, you'll need to apply a float on it to stop it. So you saw that he kind of like did a little thing, was kind of like positioning himself to heal. So uh, yeah, that's kind of it. Once you've done that, not too much to say beyond that. Kind of just run into your main DPS combo. So that's it for the mechanics there. Just got to make sure to use a floating CC on the boss to stop the heal. Now the next boss is Bennett, and this boss has a little mechanic as well to it. It's got clones that it's going to spawn. You only want to fight the one that's the main boss. Um, the main boss is easier to fight. You'll see what I mean when I get into it here. We'll, we'll, we'll start the fight with them. I'll go stand on the point and kind of walk through this one. But yeah, it's, summons clones. That's the, the kind of gimmick with this one. So we'll, we'll kind of just start the fight here and try and, uh, get it to do the clone phase. Alright, so we got a clone there. And we got a clone there. So you can see that there's two characters that I'm fighting against. Three characters right there. So the real one, you can't walk through. So that's the real one right there, because I couldn't walk through it. So this is the one I need to try and burst down. And then after you've beaten the clone phase, then you can get back into a regular fight against the same boss. So you want to try and find the one that you can't, uh, can't walk through. Could be a little tough with all the CCs that are going around. Oh, another clone phase. That one wasn't real. That one's the real one. And the last boss that we have to fight for the quest line is Evergar, and this boss has a mechanic as well. Again, you're going to need to apply floating. So once again, make sure to use the skill filter function and look for floating. Make sure you know which skills provide floating for you, and I'll tell you which attack you have to call it out for. So we'll go and set up for the fight, and I'll, I'll pick it out for you. 
that's the skill right there that you have to do it for. And uh, I was kind of uh, CC'd, so. Ooh, he hurts. That's the animation you're looking for right there. If you see him, see him successfully during that animation, you'll be able to knock him down, which is a lot easier uh, combat for you. And actually, I think I have some bad info for you. You need to use the floating and then into a knockdown. So to get him to knock down and take more damage, I had to use floating on one of my abilities, and then hit him with a knockdown. So my Searing Slam was a knockdown. I used floating with projection right there, so float and then knockdown. Um, and that allows you to CC the boss and be able to fight him down. After you've done that, an orb's gonna spawn in the middle. Go ahead and interact with that orb to complete the quest line. Black Spirit will pop up, have the next quest available for you. Crow Nest Evergrade's Fate. Run back up here. You'll see the NPC Chorpy, interact with them. Complete the quest. Crow's Nest, Crow's Mercenary. Interact with that. And then you'll have to talk to the NPC Randy right here next to the chair. Interact with them. Teleport to the Hall of Heroes. Interact with the Lavala. That'll complete the quest line in its entirety, providing you with a bunch of cool rewards, including 500 crow coins, which is pretty cool. The Pry Undying Crow's Insignia that provides you 5% combat EXP. So this is a tome that you can equip, which is just a permanent combat EXP bonus. You can also upgrade that around this area. So now that we've completed the quest line, we can start doing the daily quests here and obtaining all the cool rewards I talked about at the start of this video. So to do that, press the escape key on the keyboard and click on the War tab, Pit of Undying, yes. And that's going to teleport you to the Pit of Undying. You can do this from any major city. So after we're done with this quest line, and after we've gone ahead and uh, completed this area and sailed back to the mainland, any major city in the map, so opening up the map, any one of the major cities like Heidel, like Calfion, Grana, any of the major cities, you can teleport here from there. Once we get to this region, go ahead and interact with the NPC Chorpy. Click on the quest tab, and you'll see daily, and then whatever rank you currently are. So we just completed the Pit of Undying, we're Pry, we can head to the bottom of the Pit of Undying. Next we can head on down here and talk to the NPC Kansha, interact with them. Daily Pry, first duel of the Undying, interact with that quest, and that is going to give us some rewards. Now there are different bosses that can spawn beyond the ones that we fought the first time around. Some of these bosses have different mechanics, and it's going to be impossible for me to cover them all here in one video. If you guys want to see different mechanical explanations for all these different bosses, I guess let me know. I could probably make like YouTube shorts on it or something. Anyway, I'm just kind of going to go through the daily quest here. So the first one that I got is Valken, which is one that we already played before. This one, um, yeah, just going to kind of beat him up because, you know, I can. After you kill the first one, go ahead and back talk to Ignatia. They're going to give you 10 of the event currency or the region currency. So we'll go ahead and interact with them to take the next quest. We have our second boss fight. So this time we got a new boss fight here, Man of Steel. This boss will spawn a second boss at a half HP, I believe. And it also runs you down and beats the heck out of you. And it's a pretty, pretty brutal one. Um, you have to use different CCs on the various bosses. So make sure you know your CCs, like knockdowns, floatings, all those types of things. But um, yeah, we'll, uh, we're just going to kind of go for it here and see what happens. So at the halfway point here, we got the second boss spawned. Fortunately, all you have to do is kill the first boss. You don't need to kill the second boss that spawns, which makes it a little bit easier. Interact with the NPC to get our reward. Interact again, take on the next challenge. This time we got another different boss. This boss is Brody. Um, pretty straightforward. It's an archer, gonna pew pew you, gotta run him down, kill him, and uh, it's gonna spawn traps. Don't stand in the traps. Pretty, pretty straightforward boss fight. You can see that there's all those timers on the screen of uh, all the different traps that he's laid that I want to uh, steer clear of. Pretty easy for Musa. Just duck, dip, dive, dodge, weave. Interact with him, pick up the currency. Next event, Wanda fight. We've got our final duel of the day. Gonna provide us 20 seals of the Undying, which is a little bit more. You can also see the different exchanges. We'll take a look at that in a minute. And the Crow's Black Jewel, which is used to ascend to the next level. So you'll need 10 of these to go to the next level, then 40 to go to the level after that, 130, then 250. So you'll need to do these dailies every single day. But anyway, our final duel of the day is going to be Evergrad again. It's already told us which one it's going to be. So again, this is the one that we had a float and then knock down. So I need to do a float ability and then uh, Searing Smash or Fire Crevice or whatever it's called these days. I guess I'm just going to spin to win around him because he's blocking like a little beat. No, anyway. Um, pretty straightforward there. Complete the last one. And that's it for the daily. So now you can head up to the NPC Chorpy and click on the exchange tab and look at all the different things we can redeem here. 
So every single day you complete the quest, you get these Seals of the Undying. Um, level 1 you get 50 of them, as you progress you get more and more of them. These can be exchanged for a bunch of different items. Some of the coolest ones on there are things like fine accessory boxes. So you can get like Ogre Rings, Latent Power Stones. Ogre Ring right now in NA is going for 113. Latent's Power Stone for 105. Tongue Grand Gearing only going for 68, but even at the worst, that means it's this extra 70 million a day for doing those quest line right there. Kind of cool. Plus, I know me personally, I always love a little bit of PvE content every single day to play. But anyway, um, you can make this as easy as hard as you want. You can continue to progress if you want. You don't have to if you don't. But anyway, guys, this is a rather lengthy video to go through it. And that is pretty much the Pit of Undying. So yeah, come here, fight different bosses. Um, after you're done, you can hit the Escape key, go to the War tab, click on Pit of Undying again. Yes, enter to leave. Uh, get on your boat and sail back to the mainland. Now it's your turn to let me know what you think in the comment section down below, though. Is this video helpful? Are you going to do the Pit of Undying? What are your thoughts on it? The reward's worth it? Let me know. Let me know. And I guess also, once again, remember that you can equip the uh, that Signia that you got as a Talisman for bonus EXP. So if I click it, it replaces my book right there, my Kaffir's book that I was running. Not Kaffir's, but you know what I'm saying. Um, so instead, I'd get 5% combat EXP. So uh, just something to keep in mind. You can, you can swap those around as you see fit. But anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching. I hope the video helped you. If it is going to help you, let me know in the comment section down below. And once again, I look forward to seeing you at the next YouTube video, the next Twitch live stream, over on Twitch every single weekend, or wherever I happen to see you. Peace.